What's up everybody? It is me King Alpha. I hope everybody's doing great. So got another little guide here for you guys. It's not gonna be anything crazy, but I don't know. It's something that maybe some people just don't know about or whatever. Um and it could potentially help out a lot of players that's playing on console and other PC players that are just starting out trying to learn and you know already struggling and stuff. Anyways, so this is about the best starting position for more or less like any um, player, I guess, in the game. Uh, I've started in this position, I think, for about three campaigns I've done it, simply because it is the best It is the best position to start because it's one of the most defensive uh, spots in the entire, uh, in, in, in all of Calradia, basically. Um, and yeah, I do have my game modded, but this doesn't have to do with anything in terms of, you know, whatever. Um... And I think this spot will definitely be the, the, the best spot. I definitely want you guys in the comment section below. If you have another spot that you think is really, really good that I haven't thought about, please let me know. But for sure, I think like this is by far the best spot. So, when I'm talking about the best position, I'm talking about in terms of starting your kingdom. Now, obviously, you can start your kingdom with a castle or anything like that. I can have this castle right here and start, you know, I take it um and everything however the biggest thing about taking a castle away um or when you leave a kingdom but you keep all of your holdings is that let's say i'm a vassal of ragnavid um and i have one of my castles it's one of those things where it's like you basically uh and you say oh i want to leave his kingdom but i want to keep my castle um they will declare war on you so it's one of those things of, okay, you just left and now you're going to be at war with an entire nation by yourself with only your army. Where What's going to be the best spot to do this? Now, also, additionally, where would, be, where would a, a spot be for you that if you just wanted to attack an entire kingdom and just more or less take the, the castle that way and then, uh, or the town that way and then become a kingdom yourself, what is the best spot for that? And it is Revel. So... Or Ustakul. Regardless, Ustakul is a really good spot if you want to start your kingdom. However, you will basically go to war versus Sturgia. It's like entirely guaranteed most of the time. Revel and Ustakul, in, my, in most cases for me, never gets conquered by anybody else. I mean, maybe in other campaigns people have seen it. But the most I've ever seen Batania or Valandia ever do is achieve is just get Varcheg and Omor. Um, after that, typically, I think Kuziites can come and push through here. But for the most part, um, you know, I always see Vlandia just take Varchek and then that's it. Uh, and I've played a long campaign to see that they never come and take Revel and all that stuff. So, most likely when you're taking these castles, you know, you are going to have to declare war versus Sergia. Now... How you do this is really, really up to you. You can do it where Sturgia is maybe at war with the Kuziites and maybe at war with the Empire and Vlandia or Britannia all combined and then say, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm Clan Tier 4, I'm Clan Tier 5, I'm going to go and attack Revel because they're weak. Um, or attack Ustakul and take Ustakul. So the reason why Revel and Ustakul is, um, I, the, the main thing is talking about Revel, but Ustakul as well, is because when you take Revel, it becomes a very defensive spot. Like, yeah, let's say, you know, you're still fighting Sturgeons here. After you defeat one or two big armies, most of the time you can immediately come to Ustakul, siege it, and take it. Um, and it's one of those things where then you have at least four villages for yourself. You have, uh, well, you have four little villages that are producing good money because uh, most of the time Revel actually does have good prosperity, as you guys can see here, um, which I own it. And when you first own it, it actually can g gain prosperity pretty quick after you eventually declare peace with uh, Sturgia. Now, the big thing is here is that Revel is so defensive because the only thing, especially if you only, uh, what I did was first, I took the town first um, because it was one of those things where the towns were just easier for me to defend uh, with my elite troops and everything. And it's very easy to quickly just come over here and grab troops as fast as I can, you know, enact the certain policies again that I've made a policy video that you can go and check out where uh, you can get more troops from your villages and everything uh, a lot faster. So 
one thing I did was I basically had it where I'm just defending this area. Now, sometimes you're going to have it where an army comes through here. And instead of, like, let's say you own Ustakal and Revel, what they'll do is they won't go for the town if you're sitting in it. Sometimes they'll just go for the castle. And if the army is a little bit weaker, you see that it has a lot of recruits and you want to attack it so you can get some experience for yourself and experience for your troops, you just simply go, leave, and attack it. And it's one of those things where easy victory and you just come run back. Obviously, again, it's all dependent on the situation, how it works, you know, in terms of you, you know, bunkering down and reserving or whatever. Or I've had it a lot of times where I've defended Rebel with like 800 men versus like 3,000. It was amazing. Beautiful fights. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things of like, okay, uh, where would I start my kingdom? Should I take a castle? Should I? Because I know a, a, what a lot of people do and a lot of people do this. They wait for a town to rebel uh, and then they go and take it and then that's how they start their kingdom. And personally, I don't think that's the best way. It's the most probably one of the most challenging ways because if you just take some random town that rebels and then you declare yourself a kingdom and then most likely any kingdom around you is going to just start declaring war um, because you're going to be so weak in terms of your actual uh, overall faction power, etc. Um, I've had it a lot where I've seen Charis rebel, Sargat every time Sarga always rebels because it's always a fight between Vlandia and uh, Azurai or Batania. Literally, it's just that these three just constantly come and take Sarga and it's always rebellious. It's just, luckily I've been able to get it so that the loyalty is decent, you know, for this person because it has a Vlandian culture. But yeah, it's, it's always super bad. Um, and there's not really a lot of positions where it is kind of good to to more or less start your kingdom elsewhere. I think Revel is literally the best defensive position and easiest position to start a kingdom if you're first learning the game or you want to play more like a defensive style of, you know, Mountain Blade. And in, in terms of when you're first starting off, you know, again, what you do is you take Revel or you take Ustakel and then you expand, you know, you just keep expanding. Defeat, get some def uh, get some victories versus, uh, you know, other kingdoms and everything. And then just simply after that, just continue on from there. Go from Revel. Then you can go to Varcheg and then simply expand out this way. It's almost how I've always guaranteed a victory at almost every single one of my campaigns. And it's one of those things where I do need to change it because it's gotten so easy when doing Revel. After you beat three to four of their big armies, you literally just can come out here, go to Varcheg. They come maybe with a little small army. You beat that, and then you take Varcheg. Then you come over here and start taking all the rest. And then you, you know, you make peace, and then you start gathering other clans so you can get uh, more people in there and etc. It's uh, yeah, it's just definitely something that uh, you know. <laughs> it's really easy to do and it's one of the probably the best defense especially look at this look at how much how long they have to walk in order to just even come with an army all the way over here most of the times and i've sometimes have seen it where a lot of the times there's an army coming through here and they eventually run out of cohesion and then they all disperse or they run out of food and they all disperse so it, it is a very defensive spot to start your kingdom and i think you know for anybody that has maybe another spot that wants to talk about like maybe uh, Tial a bit. Tial's pretty good uh, if you're declaring war on Sturgia. I think Sturgia is the easiest, depending on how strong they are. But overall, don't really like fighting uh, the Azurai. The Azurai just always have numbers. Um, the Empire's super like spread out and thin, so it's like one of those things. If I come and take Zenokia, you know they'll have armies by me. Like if I'm trying to siege Zenokia, they'll just be like, oh, army, army, army. You know it's so fast. Whereas like with, again, with Revel, you just, they have to literally, you know, make an army, like, either here, and then come all the way there, and it takes so long that you most likely will be able to take the city. Anyways, I'm sorry for such a long video. Didn't need to be that way. I'm just trying to give examples and everything on, on why it's probably one of the best positions in the game to start a kingdom. Um, if you have any other positions, let me know. I'm definitely going to be doing some more Bannerlord videos, and then... More or less, guys, I will catch you guys in the next one. All right, peace out. Hope this uh, little guide helped you guys out. Peace.